guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. And I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. And this is the news. I've been adapting that for New York at all. Oh, what, what, what? Like, this is New York. Oh, good. Yeah, last hit, good, yep. <laughs> Right, what have we got in Saudi Arabia? Well, here's the thing. They haven't officially announced the next Saudi Arabia show, but as was speculated last night ahead of Monday Night Raw, they would be at least teasing the angles. They could have possibly made the official announcement, but they haven't gone as far as doing that just yet. But, I don't know if you noticed, we got an Undertaker segment last night, and the story goes, according to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer, that that was to build to the Undertaker business Elias at the next Saudi Arabia show, we believe to be taking place sometime this year, possibly in the summer, possibly even a bit before. Now, as uh, Sami Zayn himself said, which we'll get onto in a bit, if you're not going to be a WrestleMania, you as well appearing the night after WrestleMania, which nobody's ever said, by the way, but Sami Zayn was convinced that, yeah. that was a thing, yeah. Uh, so The Undertaker made a spectacular surprise return, Elias dropping the bomb of the next man who interrupts me is a dead man, hey, and then we got the gong, The Undertaker did a 20-minute entrance, he did his now two moves of doom, Three, do we count the boot? Yeah, we'll go good that. Three moves of doom and then then left and everybody shouted, do the arm thing! And he did the arm thing. And that was uh, that was pretty much it. But apparently that's all to build towards a show in Saudi Arabia between Elias and The Undertaker. Now, the man is working increasingly limited dates in an increasingly limited capacity. So, fair play to the guy. You're going to get the dollar. You might as well get the most dollar imaginable. And as we know, those Saudi shows are lucrative, aren't they? What do you think of that? Um, look, I'd like, I'd like to see a match between the two just because I'm intrigued to see how they would work together. But, yeah, like you say, he hit those three moves. Should he give you a clue? Go on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was uh, it, it's very, very limited considering what he was doing. Um, I mean, but, fair play, the guy's 100. Yes, and uh, look, like you said, see if anyone's going to return... Yeah, my leg doing the big boots. Or, or, or just do a one-off show, it's going to be at one of those Saudi Arabia shows, as we've seen in the past, and uh, this could become a regular occurrence, I suppose. But let's move on anyway to our second story of the day concerning AJ Styles. Uh, of course, he wrestled Randy Orton at WrestleMania 35, and according to Mike Johnson of PW Insider, he suffered an injury at the show and has subsequently uh, been pulled from WrestleMania access events. No update on uh, how serious the injury or even what the injury is as of yet, but uh, yeah, apparently he suffered an injury, and that's why he no-showed uh, the access event yesterday and was replaced by WWE Champion Kofi Kingston. That's a shame. I mean, we heard Ron got injured at WrestleMania as well, didn't yeah. we? So, overall, quite a bit of a mixed bag for WWE, giving us all these lovely things we want, and then injuring a lot of the top superstars at the same time. But I can't remember anything happening in that match where I would have I would have picked up on that. No. But then again, it was an eight-hour show, nearly, so everything kind of just blends into one. What do you think he's injured? Let's guess wildly. Uh, I'm going to go ribs. I'm going to go deltoids. We're going to just learn that word from good. Simon Miller. Good, good. <laughs> He's the only one of us who would actually know that term. Um, in a weird kind of way, and I never wish injuries on people, it might be for the best. That's not true at all. It might be for the best, because I always find it's true when some wrestlers, as we've seen, go away and then come back, and then AJ has been a constant in WWE for quite some time. Almost like some kind of off-season during the year would be not only good for booking purposes, but also for the superstar's health as well. Yes. Ah, funny that. Anyway, speaking of people coming back, see what we've done there. Uh, the Raw after WrestleMania is always chock full of surprise returns and guest appearances and shocking comebacks since. Well, it wasn't really this time because they did all of the major NXT call-ups a few weeks before yeah. this, but we did get a couple of things. Is it still classifiable as a thing for Lacey Evans? Because she did finally she hit did somebody. something, yeah. We're going to loosely class that, but the main one we got, I think the big talking point, was of course Sami Zayn making his long-awaited return to a WWE ring. We saw him on the monitors walking around backstage, which got a huge pop from the crowd. Don't know why they spoiled that. Yeah. Early, because the music would have done just that. Came down to the ring, asked for a challenge because he could really do with a match right about now. Finn Balor obliged, they put the Intercontinental title on the line and we got the best match of the night. Yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. Zayn looked like he had missed a step, he looked in great shape, he's pulling up all those good moves. Didn't do the one where he dived through the corner post though. Oh, I which love is that. one of my absolute favourites. I think it was like a three-star finisher on uh, 2K for a while. Absolutely <laughs> love that. Didn't do it, but the match was good. Balor retained for the IC title. And then Sami Zayn took to the mic and he went, you guys have really missed me, right? Yeah! And do you know what I've realised? I haven't missed any of you one bit. Boo! And he cut this almost Daniel Bryan-esque promo on the entitledness of the WWE crowd, how spoiled they are, how demanding they are, how they are the worst thing about the company. And, well, he just looked an idiot, didn't he, by the end of the night, because nothing that even remotely fit that criteria happened later on. But 
Uh, we've already talked about the Undertaker. That's a return of sorts. Yeah. We've got a return. Yeah. Is Lars Sullivan a debut? Yeah, I think so. I know they tease it for a while, and then he's obviously had these uh, out issues outside of the ring. But finally to see him in a main roster ring, it was really exciting for me. It wasn't. No, it wasn't. To see him in a main roster ring was horrifying because I'd forgotten how absolutely terrible. He's in the wrong shape for a person. He's the wrong everything for a person. I said to you, his entire body looks like his chin drew it. It's yeah. just. It's just awful. Who was it? Was it Adam Nicholas who said about what he looks like? Go on. He looks like a child's drawing of a scary, scary man. man. Yeah, exactly that. It was just, he's not, like, Braun's big. So you think, oh, you're going to look scary because you're big. But he's just, you ever see Mr. Strong? The Mr. <laughs> he eats 50 eggs a day. He looks like Mr. Strong. But it's great to see him back. Glad to see he's overcome whatever problems he was having away from the ring. But, yes, Lars Sullivan's here. And he absolutely beat the pace out of Kurt Angle after what was already a really good segment with Baron Corbin. I don't like seeing Kurt Angle take bumps. I don't I like seeing think, the diving headbutt. Yeah, that's just, it was a very uncomfortable segment to watch, not least of all because, I don't know, he just shouldn't have tight little pants. Like, Braun has big trousers, Lars Sullivan has these tight little pants, these little black knee-high boots, and the boots make it weird. But, yeah, good for him, I guess. That, yeah. was, a, that was it, wasn't it? Returns yeah, I think so. I think that covers pretty much everything we saw uh, on Monday Night Raw. But you mentioned earlier on the main event of the evening, and that sparked some controversy, some fan reaction. It's the Raw after WrestleMania. Why on earth would you bait them? Uh, but they did so. And they said, look, we're going to give you this main event, the winner takes all, WWE Champion versus Universal Champion. And then they just sort of ruined it. Yeah, none of us were expecting one of those to change hands. We're like, well, this is a great setup for an introduction, or, or I don't know, maybe even the AEW. No, not AEW. Uh, 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 Indisputed Era. I was going to call them Altitude Era there for a second. <laughs> that was mad hard. Yeah, we were thinking about maybe Brock Lesnar maybe coming back and getting revenge. Or the anyone. Era. Anyone was, not Cesaurus. Cesaurus and Shamo. Yo, we've been here for four days now, right? We have no voice left. I'm down to my only clothes that still fit and are dry. And I've just called them Cesaro and Sh No, that's right. <laughs> you got it right. Go on, it's heads up. Uh, anyway, as a result of that interference, fans weren't happy. There was the usual chance, as you'd expect. Uh, there was beach balls getting logged about. There was Bulsh. There was CM Pong chance. Bulsh. And there was AEW chance. Yeah. And AEW have responded to that on Twitter. Just baiting the fans a little bit with the gift of Cody Rhodes cupping his ear. There was also a we a re, a we want re, I can't even talk about we want refunds chat. Yeah. Quite good. What do you think about AEW's reaction to that? Um, some people might say they're sort of stoking the fires a bit. I mean, do any of them realistically have any reason to not do that? No. Like it's just. It's, it's unprofessional to an extent, but it's wrestling, you know what I mean? It's an angle, it's a gimmick. If people are chanting that at the show, what would they do? Just ignore it? It's, I don't know. I, people, if people have got a problem with it, I think they're missing the point side. Speaking of AEW, though, let's move on to your Twitter questions. Don't forget you can them Oh, out. these are always death. At what culture WWE? Uh, we'll start with the first question from Aditya, which references AEW. He says, Jeff Hardy mentioned in an interview that he's excited about AEW. Jeff to AEW, any chance? Uh, we're just going to have months and months and months and months of this, aren't we? Every wrestler's going to be asked about them in interviews. They're going to give a very diplomatic answer where they go, yeah, it looks great. Seems like a nice idea. And everyone's going to go, oh, you're going there? They like, are... Uh, Maybe? I don't see it. I think, I think he's, he's set, settled in WWE now. He's finding a nice sort of level on the roster. I think you might see a lot of people. I mean, I'm not saying Jeff Hardy's going to go. I don't personally think Jeff Hardy is going to go. But when you get to his age, if you've worked the kind of schedule Jeff Hardy's worked, AEW's going to be far less intense. There's not going to be any live like live shows to do across the week. There's probably much less television. I think it, probably, it would appeal to people like Jeff Hardy quite a lot because they'll take a lot of star power up with them, but they'll be able to rest up a bit, see their families a bit more. I'm not saying Jeff Hardy's going to AEW, but I can see why it would appeal. All right, let's move on to the second question of today, which comes <laughs> from JJ. He says, how long does Kurt Hawkins' winning streak last? 269 matches. That's the tie book, tie book. Uh, Final question today comes from Dylan Edward. He says, now that we have survived, and we've only just survived, to be honest, on the WrestleMania marathon, do you have any money in the bank predictions? Uh, yes. But I'm not telling the likes of you. 
I think there's so many people on that roster. I always get really excited around Money in the Bank season because it's seen as a, a launching pad for those guys that maybe you think have been slightly overlooked or underbooked. I, I will say that I'm glad that Lacey Evans appears to be filling in Becky's time until a challenger comes with the Money in the Bank. Because I genuinely thought she was going to win Miss Money in the Bank. Yeah. I thought there was going to be like a fifth. Genuinely, the pitch I had for it was they only have five women in the match and then everybody's down and falling off a ladder and she just walks out, walks at the thing, gets the thing and walks back down the ramp. Is that good in there though? Yeah, Let's cover that. It's I'll easy to book that. WWE. Um, I could be, I might see Dean Ambrose winning winner Money in the Bank because him leaving WWE is a work. But don't go because we've got something, I want to talk about something else that we have pitched before on Wrestle Culture. Maybe check out more of what, what Culture Wrestling's podcast by searching for What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes or Spotify. And that is Daniel Bryan being Mr. Money in the Bank, but it not being a briefcase. It being a hemp tote bag. You heard it here. First. And undoubtedly last as well. <laughs> let us know your money in my predictions in the comment section below. And let's move on to today's ad finally. And normally we tell you a little funny story uh, about what happened in the world of wrestling. But I just want to, and I'm sure you just want to, say thank you to everyone who came to our What Culture Live show yesterday at Stand Up New York. Weirdest experience of your life? Uh, definitely one of the life bucket list, I think. Uh, was the highlight for you the bit where the crowd cheered and booed when you and Zip your jacket? No, the highlight for me was the people trying to keep 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 for a couple of minutes. Anyway, thanks to everyone who came to that and let us know your store, uh, let us know your thoughts on all of today's news stories in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. My thanks to Adam Cleary. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. We will see you soon.